started off with the beast below um and there's one episode that we've never ever done on gpr wait did we start with the beast below honestly i can't remember now um it's been such a long time ago well but, if you haven't then that'll be the next yeah, episode exactly um the, the one episode that i know we've never ever done is um the 11th hour and I felt like this was a fitting time um, to come around for full circle um, with, the Matt's, <laughs> with the Matt Smith's doctor um, and talk about um, <coughs> the 11th hour. Um, so this is, um, I am your host, David Beauchamp. I am joined by my two co-hosts. Angela Bridget. And Drew Meyer. And we are talking about the 11th hour. Um, wow. Three years. Yeah, three years. Three years. Three, three, three seasons of Smith's tenure as the Doctor. Well, three years and two and a half seasons. Yeah, I mean, I mean but I mean, we're, we're getting to three years. We're, we're going to, you know, Seven Alpha, as they're calling it, is uh, hopefully they're going to have a, a Seven Beta. Yeah. So, we're at, um, so, um, <laughs> what, what, I mean, now we're looking back on... Two and a half seasons, Two and a half seasons. Uh, of a Smith as a Doctor. What did you think about Smith in that very first episode? If you actually think back to the to in, to those original moments of seeing Smith as a Doctor. Oh, I remember the exact moments of watching him as a Doctor. Um, and it's and it's interesting too because uh, it wasn't until the Matt Smith era that I started watching Doctor Who uh, on as as it came out. Yeah. Um, because. I didn't have a television for the longest time. I didn't have an internet connection for the longest time. So I watched the first two seasons of Doctor Who um, on DVD after they'd come out. Really? And it wasn't until the third season that I started going to friends' houses and watching it, you know, even sometimes months after the, yeah. the episode had aired. And it wasn't really until the specials yeah. um, and then uh, Matt Smith that I started watching it on a, on a regular basis. So I remember exactly what I was doing uh, watching that one. And I loved it. Um, it took me a while because, uh, you know, after Tenet, I'm thinking no one can yeah. cover Tenet. And they showed picture, the very first pictures of Matt Smith, and he's a baby. And I thought really confused that perhaps they had cast a remake of Buckaroo Banzai because that first <laughs> promo picture of Matt Smith makes him look just like Banzai. You know, Banzai. I never really thought about that, oh, but you're absolutely just like right. Banzai. I looked like he looked like, and he's you know he's weird looking like Peter Weller is too. He uh, was and with the in the background, and I didn't realize it was a Doctor Who uh, image. So I, I saw it, and, and um, I was, you know, of course, very impressed. And I don't want to go into more. I feel like, you guys do it. I'm on, I'm, 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 we're I'm, trying to see about what first episode they did, because yeah. that was right before oh, I started I on see. the show. Yeah, so I'm going well, to... should I just... No, you see, just no, filler. And, and then if you want to talk about, well, you know, I, what you thought of Smith. I already have so many feels left over from last, or from the Angels, mm -hmm. Take Manhattan, that watching this just kind of made me go, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, and just getting to see the chemistry between them from the beginning compared to the Angels. Team Manhattan just kind of, it was me just kind of reliving all the sad moments I had watching the Angels take Manhattan with that episode. But it looks so I do, young. I know, oh my goodness. Two and a half, they did not age well. Three years of Doctor Who, really, <laughs> really. Uh, I mean, I'm not yeah. saying that they aged And we were back to the, oh my God, you killed Rory stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our first, actually the very first episode of GPR 
was Curse of the Black Spot. That's so what we, I thought. We never, we never even covered any of the oh, first Oh, well, next stuff. week's episode. No. Fantastic. Well, here we go. Now, now that uh, we have a couple of months to go along before the Christmas episode, we will be reviewing um, what we missed. season five, which I feel is arguing the best season of Doctor Who uh, with uh, Matt Smith so far, but that's um, having not seen the rest of this season. Yeah. Um, what I have to say about the Lynn Thauer and Smith as the Doctor or even Amy and Rory. Um, Eccleston, and I this I have to talk about, I have to, literally I would have to talk about just about all the doctors, um, but I'm just gonna leave it to the um, the new stuff for right now. Eccleston didn't really sell me as a doctor in the first episode mm -hmm. at Rose, because it was a very much Doctor Light episode. You know, it was more we were introduced to Rose, and Rose being introduced to, to the Doctor, which is the way most people were being reintroduced to Doctor Who that weren't familiar with it. So you didn't get, I don't think you had a really good feel for who the Doctor was in that episode. But the one that followed it, you really got a sense of Eccleston's Doctor. Sure. Um, with with um, David and Tennant, I, I thought that Christmas episode was absolutely atrocious. He had no feeling for who, the, who he was as the Doctor. That's the invasion of the Sycorax, right? Yeah. Where yeah. the Doctor's asleep. Yeah, where yeah. he's pretty much just walking around his yeah. clothes. Yeah, another very much Doctor Light episode. Um, However, you gotta love that mainly because they bring in Doctor Who and the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in a single episode. And that, that was, as my first interested tenant, I was like, he just said he knew Arthur Dent. Woohoo! Yeah. So I was, I was a little um, stoked about that. I was... You know, you didn't really get who the feel for the Doctor was, and then I felt like, you know, the next episode you really didn't, because they were just rehashing, you know, the the second episode of uh, Eccleston in a lot of ways. Um, so it wasn't until a few episodes in that you really got a feel for who Tennant was, and I've always said you needed Eccleston to relaunch the show because of his name and stuff like that, but Tennant is what sold a lot of people on Doctor Who. Sure. Um, and it was like... Who are they going to get the ball, Tenet? Because, I mean, Tenet's run was... He was an amazing doctor. Um, and he even said if he didn't leave when he left, he would have stayed on. I think if he knew that that uh, uh, Moffat was going to be the showrunner... Oh, he or knew. Because he, 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 was, he was really debating about giving it a year with Moffat mm. just so there wasn't as much change in the show. Gotcha. Um, but I'll tell you, Matt Smith, he sold me in that very first episode. Oh, yeah. That he was a doctor. By the end of that episode, he was a doctor. Now, I mean, that has that doesn't happen a lot, especially not in New Who. I mean, but we've only had three doctors so far. But just, you know, Moffat just wrote him, and he just played the part so incredibly well that at, at the end with the Atroxes, and he's just like, you know, is this planet, you know, it, you know is this, uh, has this uh, planet broken any laws? Is this planet a threat? Is this planet protected? You know, and, you know, I wasn't expecting Moffat to, you know, go all the way back to Classic Who in that very first episode. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, you start seeing all the images of the Doctor, I flip out. And when, when we get to the very end, we see, he walks through Tennant's face and he says, I'm the Doctor, now run. Mm -hmm. I was gone. I, he, he was a Doctor... I mean, I was completely sold on that character. The first appearance of um, Paul McGowan, too, uh, in, in, a, in a New Who. I mean, I knew it was the first appearance of a lot of those doctors, but, you know, they showed McGowan there, yeah, which basically exactly. said, we consider this canon. Yeah. We're, Thank you. We're keeping it there. Well, I mean, I mean, and I think the real big thing about why it's considered canon... The was, audios in the comics. Well, and also because we had the McCoy regeneration in there. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, mean, I think if McCoy hadn't been a part of that, that might not have... Well, I mean, yeah. like, he did, they've done, like, three seasons of him in the audios since, like, before yeah. Matt Smith even took on. So, I mean, they kind of canonized him already. However, you know who the original Ninth Doctor was? It was, it, well, it was the guy in the comics. Before it was even the comics, it was Richard Grant. Richard E. Grant was the, was the Scream of the Shulka. Right, yeah. So he was the voice of the Ninth Doctor before yeah. they even launched the new series. Right. So yeah, which was which they actually that's not canon. Yeah. It's iconic, but yeah. it's not canon. Yeah, no, it's. Um, and he's gonna be in. He's gonna be in the Christmas gonna, special. Yep, he, is. he is. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that's awesome. But let's get back to the eleventh hour, um, where we get our first uh, taste of the Doctor's new companions, Amy and Rory. 
Sure. Though, I mean, well, though, of course, I was going to say, I mean, do you really think Rory was even going to be as integral as he ended up becoming in that first episode? No, I think the, the, the episode as written, as shown, not only do we not even care about Rory, you're almost misled into thinking blonde, muscular guy with the questionable material on his laptop is going yeah. to be a character. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 honestly, I'm actually a little bummed we never saw him again. I, what was his name? Do you remember? I don't remember. It's been a while since I've watched the episode. I and, watched uh, it earlier today and I still don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, they really set him up to be, you know, a potential, you know, let's go back later on. You're and see any him. job ever, yeah. anything you want, but you have to be fantastic. And it's like, okay, great, we're going to see this guy. He's, I thought he was going to be the next, um, uh, who was the, the prime minister from, from Tenet and Eccleston? Oh, um... Harriet, yeah, Harriet, um, what's her face? I really thought that they were setting him up to be the next her, um, that we were going to, you know, throw away character. No, yeah. fans liked her. No, we'll bring her back. We'll make her evil. We'll make her good. She'll give her life and saving, whatever. But, yeah, so what are you going to do? I still, um, well, before Matt Smith, when people said, I want to watch Doctor Who, what should I do? Yeah. And I gave them this list. You know, I said, look, if you don't want to commit to all of Doctor Who, here are five episodes per season. In, yeah. um, you could ignore this. I guess even the specials probably hadn't come out. There's, there's 15 episodes you need to watch. These are the 15. Now, when people go, I want to watch Doctor Who, where do I start? I say, look, you watch Blink first. Yes. You watch um, Signs in the Library first, and then you move straight into to Matt Smith. And if you like... Girl in the Fireplace. I, I, have, to, I have to put Girl in the Fireplace in there. Um, I agree. I agree that if, if, if they wanted a minimum amount... Uh, those are the so, three that you, have, you don't have to watch Girl in the Fireplace to appreciate Matt Smith's era, but you well, do yeah. know have to watch Blink and you do have to watch the other two well, yeah. for those. I, of course, I would always start people with um, Girl in the Fireplace because I think it might actually be the perfect introductory episode to it. But, since that's not the one we're talking about, if you have to catch up to speed, if you want to get into the Oh, if you're, Smith, if you're talking about catching up to really speed. You really need to yeah. just give them those three episodes. Mm -hmm. Maybe, actually, not even Blink. The angels by themselves don't have to... But I feel it's stronger if you know it. Actually, then again, well, if, if they get all the way to Angels Take Manhattan, then you no, won't no, I meant the um, the time but of angels the and, and yeah. for the visiting angels. No, yeah. but if they don't watch those and then they just watch all of Matt Smith, and they're going to be kind of confused between angels and that sure. season. Yeah, well, absolutely. see, for me, you know, like if if somebody says they want to watch Doctor Who for the first time, my original two go to my original two go to episodes were of, of New Who were Girl in the Fireplace and Blink. Yeah, absolutely. Those, but you know, now the one I've added in there, and I think I might want to show that to him before the other two. Now at this point, is the eleventh hour. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I just I think eleventh hour, then go back or and whatever. Watch it. It, it depends on what I have access to. You know, gauging the person. Sure. Because I know if if I want to, you know, scare the shit out of them, I'm going to show them blank. Sure. If I want them to have a, uh, you know, a good tearjerker. Girl in the fireplace. If I want them to have a fun time, yeah, I have eleventh hour. You know, it it's, 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 it depends on the person and their personality and what I think is going to hook them. I I have three three episodes to go to. If you look back at the entirety of Doctor Who's history, yeah. the episodes that are available to us because of yeah. course we don't have Power of the Daleks. Um, eleventh hour is by far and away the most easily accessible, if not the best introduction of any Doctor. Oh yeah, um, with the, and, and, and I and I include. Um, you know, the unearthly child in that, even though I still think the unearthly child is in many ways almost a superior episode, it is a little, um, I, I don't think I would introduce people to Doctor Who that way. Okay. Um, Unless they want to see yeah. the beginning. I think I would still give them, this is what it is now, and if they like it, yeah. if they like it, they're willing to sit through that. And I think yeah. you got to hook them in and then go back. Because, though I don't know, Castor Valve is a really good introduction episode. I, I think that's a terrible episode. It is I, for an introduction. Not. You don't I want think to it's a terrible people, episode. For people that are going to watch New Who, you don't want to... Well, no, I mean, yeah, but that. I mean, I just... But okay, let's get back to the 11th hour here. <laughs> um, was there anything about the 11th hour? No, let's get back to, let's get back to Amy and Rory. Or especially, let's get back to Amy, because Rory was really, he felt like a very much like a background character. Rory in that first episode. He, so like he had character. a lot more screen time, though, than I remembered. Like, because it's been forever since I watched this episode. Mm -hmm. I probably saw it twice when it originally aired. 
and then I just oh. I hadn't seen it since then, and I just really didn't remember Rory seriously having as big of a part as he did because you saw him a lot more in this episode than you do in later ones. Yeah, absolutely. And I just it, it totally because like I said, I watched it when it aired, and then I probably watched it once on demand afterwards just to kind of because every week I would rewatch the previous weeks before I watched the new one because on demand for our cable has BBC America. And so I just didn't remember because it had been so long that I can't he wasn't even, there so much. I understand. I can't even tell you how many times I have seen The Love Hour because I because it's one I've shown people. It's one that I I, I watched a lot because I I really like that episode. I would say that that, other than Blink and Girl in the Fireplace, yeah. and The Love Hour, the three episodes that I've seen the most, so I've shown the most. What did you think of Amy in this episode? Hot. Yes. Hot. Yes. I'm sorry. The the kissogram um, outfit. The kissogram outfit, and it's and then just think though she's also dressed up as a nurse and a nun. Well, she wasn't in that episode. But um, they say it. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I'm aware. Because that um, little old lady's like, weren't you a nurse last time? I'll and tell you, the first time I saw it, weren't you a nun too? I didn't catch at first that that Amy was the cop. I I, I it took me a second to realize that what was happening, um, because I didn't watch any. I wasn't on the internet for yeah. looking about Doctor Who. I hadn't seen any previews, so they don't own a television. It wasn't on BBC yeah. America. Um, and that's another thing is I live in this world that's vastly different now with the hype machine for Doctor Who yeah. was in full bore, where then it was, yeah, it wasn't very... uh, you know, uh, let's face it, Matt Smith has created a brand new monster yeah. and BBC recognizes that. So I wasn't surely aware. I was thinking, I didn't realize that um, little Amelia, I thought she was going to be this great mystery what happened oh. to her, and I thought that was going to be part of the story. And it, it, it took me a second, and then I realized, I just heard the accent, realized the accent, I saw the hair, because you don't immediately yeah. see the hair. And then I went, oh, ha, okay, sure, that makes sense. Well, I, I think the reason why, you know, BBC finally realized the fandom over here, because they were very careful with Tennant. They would not let him fly over here for conventions. Sure. I mean, they had him on a short lease because they were afraid that if plane crashed, they lost their, they lost Tennant. So they were very careful, but I think I, I don't know if it was it was part Moffat, part Tennant, you know Smith, part Torch, what everything. I'll tell you what it was. It was money. Yeah, but they finally realized that we were as who crazy. We're more who crazy. I know. The than US the Brits is are far more who crazy than the Brits are. Yeah. we are like the and no offense, we're like the Japanese at this point in time. We are the crazy people who are dressing up like maniacs yeah. and chasing them through the streets. They're, you've seen the shots of them trying to film in Central Park. Yeah. And the camera. And no they don't there. do that in like, Europe. They don't. My, well, my, my, I mean, it probably well, will start, they but not very, bad. Very, it's very seldom because I was actually talking to one of my friends who lives in England. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me, she's like, yeah, it's when they're filming Doctor Who and Whale, they don't, they well, just I mean, I don't care. Like I said in that one episode, I, I think one episode, maybe one or two ago, it's like, you know, when they were filming Dawson's Creek in Wilmington, anybody that lived there, we didn't care, you know, because we were so used to them filming. And that's a lot A lot of the stuff in Wilmington. You just, you're just so used to them taking over places, you know, filming. Sure. You just sort of you got used to it. I, it's I just believe my happens. response to that was, I can't believe once again that you've compared Dawson's Creek <laughs> yeah. to Doctor Who. But yeah. I, I understand the point you're yeah. trying to make. Um, but yeah, so, well, Amy, obviously with your first introduction with Amy, um, uh, especially after Donna, who is very much... The buddy, you yeah. know, and, the, and there's like this back and forth relationship, and you know, Catherine Tate is still, and probably may very well be my favorite, well, it's certainly my favorite New Who companion, she might very well be my favorite companion of all time, um, just from the chemistry that they had, because New Who allows for a chemistry yeah. between the companions that, that the old show just didn't have, it was, the companion was either the action when the doctor couldn't do it, or was the screamer, I was the dancer, yeah. the, and so, um, after Donna, we had this great thing. Here's Amy, who essentially in the first episode is is just kind of feisty eye candy. And I, I hate to say that, but I mean, that's really how she kind of comes off in that first episode. Except um, for when she's Amelia. Well, yeah. That'd be just creepy. Yeah, no, wait, in a second, I want to go back to Amelia. And that's why I said Amy and not Amelia. Yeah. So going back to Amelia, because I mean, that's where we really start with. I love with, that little girl that I've um, Caitlin Blackwood. She's awesome. Fish fingers and custard. Yeah, I thought about making that for, for tonight. And, um, yeah, but I no, I mean, button. but I mean that original, I mean that original opening scene with him eating the food mm -hmm. and describing the new taste buds. I mean that was a very comedic opening. 
that we have never had before. Uh, what? No, okay. I, I would argue that we we haven't with the new Who. Yeah. But that, I, that first introduction to the Doctor, they always do the Doctor goes to find his clothes. Yeah. And you have, especially when you deal with... Well, no, think about it. Um, Pertwee is in the shower, so there's a... Well, we, yeah. You see the first tattoo scene. Yeah. Um, Baker doing the multiple costumes. Yes. There is, isn't really anything funny, actually, with Davison. And that, I think, is one of my favorite Davison parts is the kind of... He can't figure out who he is. Yeah. And then he goes, wait, I'm a cricket player, which... Um, they definitely ham it up with um, McCoy, not so much with Baker, because Baker... Yeah. Well, Baker was just kind of tasteless. But that's... Yeah. And I'm not against Baker, but, you know, the costume, yeah. you see that. That's... Oh, there wasn't even Technicolors. It was, like, no. really the bad Christmas. Color. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so you got this thing... Do you think um, that that scene with them went on too long? You know, I have, I have actually wondered that myself. Um, part of me says yes, mm -hmm. but then part of me says no. Yeah. Because it, there's a very magical, it's a very magical scene between the two. And then we wouldn't have gotten such lines as bad, bad beans. Bad, yeah. You're, yeah. And you're Scottish fry something. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, some bacon, ugh. I think what's amazing about that, and it, and it took me a while to realize what... Doctor Who was trying to accomplish, because Doctor Who traditionally, um, even in the new Who, but especially in the old Who, Doctor Who is very much a science fiction show. Oh, most certainly. I mean, the Doctor is that gadget guy. But Matt Smith is not science fiction. Matt Smith is science fantasy. It's yeah. very much, the season five is a fairy tale. They allude to it being a fairy tale. Moffat wrote it as oh, a fairy yeah. tale. And who, who <laughs> stars in fairy tales? Not older women, but little girls, and that's why he, he refers to it as yeah. Amelia. There's something really beautiful about that relationship and, and, you know, it's, it's well, I mean, there's so much to say about that first season. Season yeah. five really is an amazing season. Oh, it is. I mean, there, sure, there high, there's some, you know, obviously high points, and there's some low points yeah. of it. Um, and I'm trying to remember what episode I didn't like in season five. Is, is um, Cold-Blooded and Hungry Earth, is that season five? Yes. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think if you've got to choose a low point for the season, that's it. But, um you know, but it's, it is a very magical episode in, in many ways. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, their relationship was cool because he was interacting with the child, and he's, and he's never done that before. No. Adric was young, Nissa was young, but they weren't children. No. And I think all of us, by the end of that episode, probably would have been happy if he had actually taken Amelia, Amelia with yeah. him. It would have been, I think, awkward past a single episode. Yeah. You know, yeah. If, if they had done the first episode where he did an adventure with her and brought her back and then came back older, I think it would have worked. I think it would have worked okay. I think what they did with it was really, really amazing and really beautiful. And um, you But it also set it up for Angels, where Amy tells him to go back and talk to that little girl who's sitting out there waiting. Sure. So. Well, here's the thing. Davian, obviously you know this because, you know, it, with Girl in the Fireplace being yeah. essentially such a, the, the masterwork of this, really, the Amy and Rory story is a two-and-a-half-year version of Girl in the Fireplace. Oh, I mean, most it's, definitely. It's, it's, Moffat took this one idea, and he stretched it for an entire season. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just that you have something that worked, and you said, you know, let's make it better. Let's make it longer. Let's really do what yeah. we can with it. And I think that, um, yeah, what well, well, they, well, they call back to it. I think it's the again. first... Re I mean, if, if we look at the whole thing with Amy and Rory, which I don't mind talking about because, we're you know... We're, we're sort of full circling here. If you that haven't the, seen this episode by now... No, I mean, just the whole thing. I think it's the first real relationship we've ever seen um, take place in Doctor Who from a start to a finish. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh wait, wait, you're talking about... Amy the, and Rory. Amy and Rory. Oh, yeah. of course. Well, Amy and Rory feel very much the way that they almost wanted to do Ian and Barbara in the yeah. very first season with, with Hartnell. Um, and because Ian and Barbara were the audience, you know, you've they got were. the young kid, you've got the action, because Hartnell's not going to knock anybody over until he's played by so-and-so in, yeah. in The Five Doctors. Um, so you've got these, we're essentially Ian and Barbara, but what's beautiful about it, and I'm, I'm starting to write a piece on, on why, and I think mentioned this before, but I'm redoing it, why I think Rory is the best male companion that has ever been on the series, and possibly one of the best companions, um, is that you've got these gender roles, but you've, they're, they're kind of reversed. Well, not, that, not saying that. Amy's the, the, the certainly has the, is the more willful one. Rory is the almost the romantic. Yeah. But he's also the skeptic. Um, and he is the, the character that... 
he's doing it for her, not for the doctor. He's and it's very cool to have this relationship. He's almost the breaks well, in the relationship. I love the fact that he was the first one when he steps onto the TARDIS that isn't wowed by the interior. Isn't, yeah. yeah. He's just like, aren't you? No, get bigger on the inside. You know, yeah, he just... I looked it up afterwards, yeah. got it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, not the doc, I'm not the master, but, you know, bigger on the inside. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, that was, a, that was a great scene because I really set up the Dr. Rory um, relationship, which I still wish they had done... I still wish there was an episode where the Doctor and Rory went off and did something without Amy. I would have loved to have seen it. I feel that that was a missed opportunity. Yeah. I also feel that, you know how we talked about um, the doc as a doctor, as a woman, and this is I know come up on a number of GPR. Yeah. I still feel that the relationship between Amy, Rory, and the Doctor, if you had done one episode where something happened and the Doctor became a woman, Amy and Rory would have been the companions that you needed for that episode. Especially if there was a scene with someone like compared the Doctor and Amy together and they found the Doctor more attractive, like as a female, and Amy felt dejected and Rory had to comfort her. You know, like, I or, feel that they're missing some humor there. It would have been that one time and then everyone or, else would have Or what would have been interesting is if they role reversed everybody. How so? You know, no, I mean, like, you know... Amy is a man? Yeah, exactly. You know, oh. switch, you know, zapped everybody's gender. Oh, yeah, that would have been hilarious. Yeah, um... I don't... Oh, no, they would have done that. Yeah, but, but yeah. still, you, you never know. I mean, they could still do Amy that story. Well, Rory yeah, they could do that. That would have been a, a... Actually, that would be a great one to do in a book because then you wouldn't have to worry about physically casting anybody yeah. in it. Or who knows? You know, don't steal this idea because we're going to write it for a comic. You know, we'll get Kelly to do it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's a lot to do with that. I mean, you know, we're... The Amy Rory Doctor relationship is too big, too complex, and too actually, I think, well done to discuss in just this episode. So let's just talk well, yeah, about, yeah, about yeah. how it's. So, um, are there any unanswered questions from the eleventh hour that were never answered? Yes, there was one. Um, I'm still obsessed with that burning house. I watched that recently, and I do not did not see uh, the burning house. I'll, I'll pull it up no for you. I have what you guys are talking I'll, about. I'll, I'll pull it up for you, uh, which I keep saying I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> I'll pull it up with the laptop. But no, the burning house was never... I, it could have been a red herring, but it was just so weird that they would make that image so... so there, so prevalent, that you know they would just gloss over it. It seemed like that, that was the thing that was... But then, of course, you know, we got the 50th anniversary coming up, you know. You, maybe maybe we'll get some answers there. I don't know. I'll tell you. I know last week we talked about them never coming back, and I don't no. want them to come back. But it being Moffat and having watched and listened to a couple of other podcasts and just how people are talking about angels and kind of unanswered questions, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see them again. I know... I know it's... Well, I don't want to. Well, she said she just didn't want to become like Rose. You know, where she I, just kept coming back. I, I get that. I get that. I just... I could possibly see them in some type of flashback or something for the 50th. Mm-hmm. But I don't really... That know. would work for me. I don't I don't need to see them for the 50th. That That's not necessary for me. But I would like to see them... In co the context of this season, because I feel like there were some things that kind of went, and, and I don't know if it's Moffat just throwing those weird red herrings out there, or if it's actually something that, that I don't needs know. to be addressed. I would say I don't think we're going to understand this season until we're at the end of the season. I agree, a hundred percent. I still feel that I'm not wrong about those. The order in which the episodes. order in which those episodes are being in. Um, a couple of things really draw that. For instance, in the. Um, a Town Called Mercy, which I still haven't watched a second time, and I still feel is my least favorite of them. They referred to um, Rory leaving his iPod charger or his iPhone charger in the in so and so's bed, but you don't see that scene until yeah. um, the slow invasion or the yeah. power of three. Um, uh, the the Shakri in the power of three is that the Emperor from M Return of the Jedi. No, okay. I don't. I don't think so. I just thought the actor looked like it, and uh, I should probably go on. I think that's that. Ian McComb was the master, and or the the emperor. emperor? Yeah, and I yeah, I don't think that was him. Okay, um, they would have made a big deal out of a that. A couple of things that I noticed about um, that before. I know you want to jump onto some news because you yeah. got this folder up. Yes, One, I felt that you could feel the influence of um, Moffat with Sherlock um, in the one very brief scene where. Um, 
the doctor looks at Rory and sees that Rory is taking pictures of yes. um, Prisoner Zero. I felt that that was really out of place in that. Ep- I'm, I'm just. It's one. It's not a complaint. It's just an observation. Well, they, I think in, in in that scene, and they've said it in the past. They were trying to show people how the doctor thinks mm-hmm. and how the doctor sees the world. Right. Um, I thought it was an interesting thing. They've never gone back and done done anything like that. I would have liked to. He was like, I didn't like it in yeah. that sense, but if they had done it again, I would have liked it. But I feel yeah. it would have drawn too many comparisons to the way um, that Sherlock thinks, especially yeah. in that um, the very first episode in the study yeah. of Pink. Where Sherlock is running through London and he's chasing the taxi. And if you haven't seen Sherlock, of course, go immediately and see Sherlock. I assume everyone here has watched it. But, oh yeah, um, it, that really drew it. I felt like they were kind of doing it around the same yeah. time. Yeah, well, I, I think there was like a season apart. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, and I think that's probably why we didn't get that ever again. Was because it's like this would be brilliant for because I bet you Sherlock was probably in the back of his head in development or something. Yeah, of course. Um, anything else you want to say about the eleventh hour before I get to a little bit of good news? Ah. Uh, I still want to get a toy. I know we're, it's, now it's too late to get it, but I still would love to get the toy of um, that just gorgeous actress who, um, the one with her who, who is dreaming uh, with the two girls. Oh, and, yeah. And she's talking to the, the little, little girl. Yeah, the really little girl. Creepy. And then the mouse. Because I thought, I have wanted to show my godson, who's eight years old, yeah. the 11th hour. It's a good way to place a start, except I still think that those teeth. <laughs> I don't think you would have a problem with Prisoner Zero, but I think it's the humans with yeah. the teeth. That's really messed up. Prisoner Zero is a great monster. That race is a great monster. Well, what's great about Prisoner Zero is he is he's not a combative monster. You fear that he physically could do damage yeah. to you, but he never does. He has, you know, do I want to see... You know, is it for an introduction to a character, like we never saw the Sycorax again, or maybe did we see the Sycorax in Big Bang? I think we saw him one more time. It might have been Big Bang, right? But um, and then and then we have not seen the Autons again since Rose. Am I correct in that? No, they were the ones. All all the um, all the all the Romans in Big Bang. Oh well, yeah, and I get that, but not the the, the classic Autons. No, not the classic. Okay. Right. So, and then we didn't see really Prisoner Zero again, and I think that's he kind of in interesting. He was in a flashback in something. He was in the, um... He was in a flashback. Flash, well, uh, you know, silence, down, down. Yeah. Yeah, what I'm saying is, as a, 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 well, a character again. Technically, possibly, we did see him even before that episode in the one with, uh, was it called Dialect? It was the first time we see a Dialect again in, in New Who. Right, yes. Um, if you look, when you're going through the museum pieces, one of the aliens that he has in there... Looks like Prisoner Zero. Okay, I'm going to go back and watch that. That would yeah. be cool. I actually have been meaning to go back and watch Dalek because I remember really liking that episode yeah. a lot. So. Well, I mean, you see, you see classic Cyberman head and things like that. Sure. Um, it's But yeah, there's an alien in one of the cases that looked just like Prisoner Zero. Yeah. I mean, he looks like a big more eel. I have I have the little action figure. I haven't taken him out of the package yet because I want to attach a suction cup to him so I can put him on the underside of things and just have him. Because what's great about Prisoner Zero is you never actually see what he's attached to. He's, he's just kind of up there. And it's a, <laughs> I know. Is it like... Like a, a more eel just kind of floating, like or in the, the air. He's actually in wrap. He's in, in in a sub. Yeah. So, no, it's a great episode. It's a fantastic episode. Uh, I think so, it's a, it's so, I mean, if we were gonna derpy tardis, tardis this one, um, because we've really not derpy tardis most of these, but you can buy this. Sadly, you don't buy them individually. You buy them as seasons. But if you're going to derpy tardis this episode, how many derpy tardises would you give? Um, the eleventh hour. Out of five. Out of five. Out of five. I get five. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is. I. Yeah. This is the first time we've actually all agreed on what we would give an episode. Well, here's the thing. Um, this five. I think. Cartuses. I think we can agree that there are certain iconic episodes. There's certain iconic episodes from the classic. There's certain iconic yeah. episodes from New Who. And I. 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 I would be very hard pressed to find someone who did not think eleventh hour was an iconic episode. You know. And the sad thing is, through most of tenant season. A lot of the, the episodes are going to be the Moffat episodes. You yeah. know, if you, if, and, and you include, um, because you have to include um, Empty Child and the Doctor Dances as an iconic one, because if nothing else, uh, if you, look, you introduce Jack Harkness. Captain Jack is in that episode. I know, I know. I'm just, I, I'm just not a huge fan of those two episodes. Yeah. yeah but that's I, just me. That's just me. I'm, I, I mean, lots of people love it. I see lots of people dressed up as, are you my mommy? I mean, it's just not one of my favorites. 
here's what I liked about it, because I remember what it was like being scared by Doctor Who as a kid, mm -hmm. and when I first started going back and watching Doctor Who, um, I was like, well, this is kind of cheesy. I mean, and, and the RTD era stuff is kind of cheesy, but um, I consciously turned the lights on in my apartment <laughs> the first time I saw The Empty Child. I remember sitting on the floor in front of the TV in the dark going, and it was ho it was near Halloween yeah. too, and I'm just like, someone's going to knock on my door and they are going to scare me. I'm going to preemptively turn on the lights and I'll, I'll and that's great. And I think that yeah. gives it bonus points. But, okay, different thing. Okay. So, give us some news. Okay, you know, anything else you want to say about this episode? Yeah, I know you're good. Um, okay, this was interesting. Um, this came out on Friday, October the 12th, this, this sort of uh, news roundup type thing. Um, this is something that was uh, actually from October 8th from The Express. Um, rumors over the possible appearance of previous companions for the 50th anniversary continue. Fueled by the usual insider gossip, next year is a mass is massive for the show. They are going they are going to be pulling out all the stops. The 50th anniversary show is set to feature stars from the past and present. There will be plenty of nods to the show's remarkable history, and some old faces are likely to re, um, be reappearing. Karen and Billy are two of Doctor's greatest of Doctor's greatest companions, and it's hoped they'll be involved. Other names being hand bandied about include former Doctor David Tennant. Big surprise there. Um, and the Doctor's originally traveling companion, Susan, as played by Carol Ann Ford. I think, I think that's, that's the big thing. So the, right there it, it's telling you, which we've known. I mean, it's not like a real big shocker, but we know they're talking to everybody. Sure. It's just a matter of who says yes, who has time, yeah, and where can they throw them. Yeah, and who's already working on something before they even knew this was going to happen. And yeah. Well, okay, let's say a lot of those people probably aren't working on other stuff, and they're probably just sitting by the phone waiting to get them that phone call. Well, one person they're going to have problems getting is Barrowman. Hmm. Because Barrowman right now is uh, on the CW Arrow. No, really? Yes, he's going to be playing a mysterious billionaire slash millionaire on the show. And, you know, they haven't really given him a name, I don't think. I don't hope... They I, haven't I, said very much about... I really hope he plays a certain billionaire that the DC Universe is known for, because I think he'd be phenomenal Captain as... Captain Jack is Bruce Wayne? I think he'd be phenomenal as Bruce Wayne. Okay, we're... we're, we're <coughs> even but though no, it involves Behrman. But I think, I think he would be a hard one to get right now, if he's getting the steady work. Look... Would your world end if Barrowman didn't show up in the 50s? Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that the Arrow people, because the whole reason he got that that gig on yeah. Arrow was because the guy doing the show said, I am a huge Doctor Who fan. Yeah. I want you in this show. Sure. So I'm pretty sure Barrowman said, hey, they want me to go back to England or Wales to film the 50th. The well, guy would be like, go. Well, no, well, it no, also this, doesn't this, hurt any show and that's the for reason your the stars dude, to get popularity. And the dude from the Silence episodes, the... Crap, I can't remember his name. The Canton? Thank you. The whole reason, he was filming Supernatural. The whole reason he got to do this because the guys from Supernatural that were doing the show, yeah. he said, look, they want me to go and film this episode of Doctor Who, and they were like, yeah. go. Do yeah. It. Well, the, th the thing is, is we know they're going to get Barrowman at some point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't particularly need him for the fifth. I do. <laughs> you know, he's coming back. I mean, they pretty much... He can much come back in as many new episodes as he wants. Yeah. But I mean, they pretty much just said. Just rivers in there with them. Oh my goodness, that'd be amazing! I would, I would love to actually. I want an episode of just Barrowman and the actress who plays River with the Doctor on the TARDIS. It I would be amazing. No, I don't need the Doctor. No, I want that one. And I just think that their banter and the Doctor just like. No, they would. They would have fucked the Doctor. Why am I here? And him just going like work on well, the TARDIS. No, because honestly, um, they Alexis has actually said she would love to do like a one-off episode or something, like a one-off mini mini episode of just. Her and Jack. Yeah, that'd be great. And I think they would be a, a great... It would be really interesting to see, to see the two of those. But, I mean, I don't have to have Barrowman for that. I do. We know you all love Barrowman. All Barrowman all the time. Well, here's the yeah. thing. We also don't know if we're looking at a um, Five Doctors type special or if we're looking for a series of shorts. Kelly, um, Kelly, I think it was Kelly uh, this weekend said, what would be really cool is if you had a season. You know, if it, you studied the 50th anniversary and there were 11 seasons and each season had Matt Smith, or each episode yeah. had Matt Smith dealing with a storyline involving one of the Doctors. And, um, 
And just and just that, you know, like going back with his own things or dealing with an enemy in that or having one of those doctors play a character in it. And honestly, I think, you know, even if they keep saying there's going to be the one big special, I really have a feeling that season eight uh, or series eight is going to be something like that. Do we think that series eight is going to start in November? Is that kind of the idea? We'll finish up season series seven. We'll get seven B, seven beta. It'll finish up. We'll have a summer. They'll be filming it, and then on uh, well, in November the season eight I will start, and that's the actual honestly. The I wouldn't be surprised if they don't start the new season, you know, on the original air date. Yeah, I would imagine yeah. that that would be the good idea. Um, and you know, I because Moffat originally was saying that we have something huge in store for you, and he was sitting at an entire season, and especially even a longer season. Well, Before this one, Moffat lies. So. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, he is guiding the 50th anniversary of Who. I don't see him lying about that. I could see it being a year-long thing. Or I see a series-long thing. I could see that. I also want it to be that way, so... Um, I, I think Moffat would be... I could see him doing a lot of extra stuff like they did for Pawn Life and stuff, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think whatever we're thinking they're going to do, they're... Moffat being Moffat, he's going to top anything we think of. I hope so. Let's hope so, that because that would be um, wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more or less happy with him with what's going on right now. I'm just very curious about what's actually going on. Yeah. Well, I mean, because seven A, I think is just it, it's all in this direction right now. I think once we get seven B, and the Christian social, we'll be like, oh, that's what he was doing. Yeah, seven A is interesting. Um, because what we're dealing with in, in this sense is it feels like we're getting a bunch of different stories that are going to make sense at the end of the season, but also a lot of what it, it felt like is saying goodbye to the ponds. And here's the thing, and I, have, I think I said this last week, I'll say it again, I did not get the emotional impact that I wanted to get, yeah. mainly because of the media blitz we got yeah. on, on, um, for Angels Take Manhattan. I think that new people new to who, um, the young. I, th yeah. I saw eight year olds as the doctor. Yeah. And, and Amy, um, it may have very well have been a boy dressed as Amy too, which it would have. I'm, I think it which was brilliant. Um, in that, well, I think with their the emotional impact that Angels Take Manhattan, which I didn't feel, and yeah. I think a lot of people didn't get mainly because it was in your face, in your in your face, yeah. in your face. Years from now, it is going to hit people like a ton of bricks, um, even even if they don't know. So if someone says, here's Doctor Who, watch this season. Yeah. I'll watch, you like this? Watch this season. I'll watch this season. Yeah. Nothing else. So yeah. we'll see how that goes. You know, I'm really curious because I really feel that he's playing the shell game on us. Misdirection, totally. I agree. With um, 7A to 7B. I so. have 10 theories about that. So, okay, question. I mean, we, we, you haven't brought this up in a while. So who do you think is going to be asking him the question now? No, I don't even care. I... Look, I still think, I think actually the doctor will ask himself. It, I would be more than happy to have um, Susan ask him the question. But here's the thing. I, after we watched the, the, you know, going back and watching the five doctors and seeing Caroline Ford, the fact that she was in that must have been a huge thing at the time. But, like, in retrospect, it feels almost like a cheat. Like, how do you explain that? I feel like kind of the... the <laughs> The, the crystal ball has been popped or something like that. Well, I think Moffat has had, is going to have the time to hint at everything. Yeah. And he, he's already done a really good job mm -hmm. with hinting about his past, his family, you know. So I think it's just a matter of time um, where he's... And honestly, I, I think at this point it has to be uh, Susan because he's going to have to be forced to deal with the consequences of his actions. And that was the first time... He really, you know, damaged the timeline. Mm. I mean, he practically erased her timeline, and he's yet to go f back to find out what happened to her. Yeah. Yeah, I... I again, five doctors. Um, yeah. She didn't seem that angry with him at that point in time, but again, and that's... the five. And look, five doctors, I feel, is reverent, relevant to this conversation because I don't want... The 50th to be another five doctors because they tried to fit as too much stuff in an hour and a half and it didn't work. Um, so there's that one. I think. Uh, do you have anything else about the, the Who News? 
Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff that I've, I've heard, but one of the things I wanted to just uh, mention briefly. Uh, oh, we're about to, yeah. About to close up? We close in 20 minutes. Okay, great, thank you. We're, we're in the back of a Denny's, so, you know, it's, probably, <laughs> it's bound to happen. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I just kind of want to go back to uh, Angels Take Manhattan go right ahead. and um, 11th Hour and, and how they became cyclical with um, the moment where uh, Amelia looks up yeah. and hears that. Because, you know, it, it, yeah. was, I went back and I watched Hand of Fear. Um, are you familiar with, have you seen Hand of Fear? Uh, Hand of Fear is the last episode in which um, we see uh, Sarah Jane. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Sarah yeah. Jane leaves. The doctor has to. He's, he's called away to Gallifrey. Yeah. Um, humans aren't allowed on to Gallifrey, so he drops her off in Croydon. And Sarah Jane. That's her famous jumper episode. Oh god, that candy striping jumper yeah. episode. Yeah, that's ter- oh, with god. the duck on the front. Oh, so bad. Or was it a star? I can't remember. I don't remember either. It was terrible. I, um, it's it's bad. So, but she looks up and it almost has that same yeah. sepia tone. Um, but that was interesting because. I like Amelia Pond better than I like Amy Pond. Um, I like the that magical aspect yeah. of it. I like Amelia as she was rather than what Amy kind of became because I felt like I still have some problems with the Pond's relationship. I love the Pond's I, mainly because of Rory, and that's actually a 360 from how I felt after the season five. Rory really became the standout character in season six. Oh, we're so And boy. certain season seven. I, in a way, you kind of got to wonder why Rory even likes Amy, um, because she treats him like garbage pretty much the entire time. Like, every time we see him in flashbacks, all of season five, all of season six, and it really wasn't until this season where they said, hey, sure, Amy's matured. It's been ten years that they've been traveling with the Doctor. Um, but Amelia has that fairy book quality that I yeah. was talking about earlier, and that, that science fantasy aspect of it. But I felt in that moment they were comparing her to... Um, Sarah Jane, and you can't touch that. That that. <laughs> but anyway, so. so, um, anything else? Like our Facebook page and our YouTube channel for Galfrey Pirate Radio. So look us up on there. I'm making sure I'm adding that before you start closing out because we haven't said in a few episodes. And I That's true. To make sure and if you know. if you you know one of the things that I feel that uh, as our, our podcast doesn't really have is. Well, we don't have a Twitter account. Um, we don't have a yeah. Tumblr account. No. But we have a Facebook account. Yes. And we post it on Facebook, and a lot of people like it. And uh, we have one. And I'll occasionally people. post questions, too. I'll be sure. like, so, what should this blah, blah, blah? I want to get responses. I want to respond. So, if, you know, here we are. We're talking about the 11th hour. Sure, it's two and a half years late. But um, we, are <laughs> going to, we are going to be covering until the Christmas episode. But let's go ahead and let's just say it. We're going to cover... Um, Let's go ahead and cover season five. Well, we, well, we still have one other episode we have to do before... Downtime? We have to do downtime. Okay, we're going to be doing downtime. I will watch downtime. I know, it was my idea and I'm the one who didn't watch it. Yes. We'll watch downtime, then we'll watch um, The Rise of Azazel, I think is what it's called, or something, which is the sequel to downtime. See, um, I can't find any reference to that uh, anywhere. It, all you have to do is... Oh, God, I hate to say this. Just go to Wikipedia. So like it's, they were saying, we would love it if you guys would comment on Facebook, on YouTube, below the video. It would be great. Or We you, hated the 11th hour. What are your thoughts? <laughs> or, or or if you have a fan film you want us to you know, take a look at or a fan episode. You know, um, just I've please, been enjoying please, that. Please keep it decent. Above the waist. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no dollar porn. Hey, we're reviewing you know that. We need to watch that. We do. We yes. need to watch. Yeah. We need to, was it, give me some fist bump. I'll give you a snail. How about that? Um, all right. We need to, is it captured? I have President it. Pre- oh, do you have it? <laughs> I own it. He does own okay. it. I actually, I actually own one of the actual copies, one of the real copies. Ooh, that doesn't surprise me. Was it Prisoner of Daleks? No, it's just... I was captured by Daleks? Something like that. Yeah, okay. I, I just it. found out about this, like, last week. I, I didn't yeah, know about yeah, it. Yeah, no, I actually own a copy. Wait. We should sit together, we should drink, and we should watch this. You know, one day someone's going to get smart and they're going to do a Doctor Who porn that's going to be the 30th Doctor. And just going to be three. Anyway. No, 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 no. The, the 69th Doctor. Uh, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the sequel do it. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, before we go anywhere else in this episode, uh, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm killing us here. This is GPR signing off. Until next time. Don't, don't look at me.